All right, we're on a different night, but we are right back in the same positions at Kickin' Chickens West Ashley location. This is the Mike Houston Radio Show, and we will call it, like they do in the television business, our season premiere. Or not our premiere, it's our season finale. Yeah. Just like the season finale coming up on Saturday when the dogs are at VMI for the Military Classic of the South. So uh, we welcome you in to Kickin' Chicken. I'm Mike Legg. Head coach Mike Houston is alongside, and we've got an hour's worth of things to talk to you about here our phone number if you'd like to get involved 843-725-0989 843-725-0989 and so we've got a lot to talk about here today so let's get right to it uh, how was practice today coach it was pretty chilly now <laughs> it was uh i think uh, 39 degrees with pretty good wind whipping so uh i did discover one thing about being at the beach is uh the cold here is a uh, colder cold than it was in the mountains of west north carolina so up there was 39 you know you could you could stomach it pretty good but it was uh, it was pretty chilly out there there's nothing to block that wind here no. i guess it's just oh, uh, no. when it's moving it, it really gets you uh, kind of gets you in your bones a little bit yep but the kid uh, the kids handle it just fine they you know we had a good good practice good energy good tempo good spirit so uh you know they they obviously didn't affect them too much since we're here on tuesday this week we can uh we can uh, tell you that, like, on t every Tuesday we have a luncheon, a press luncheon that Coach yeah. comes to, and he brings a couple of players. And today right. you had Aaron Miller and you had Cam Mobley. And Aaron referred to something, and I only caught just a, 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 be a little little piece of it. Um, but he mentioned something about not being allowed to wear sleeves. <laughs> So uh, some guys choose not to wear sleeves when it's right. cold. So I was just curious, what what would exactly that meant? Well, we don't let any of our ball carriers wear wear sleeves just because of the the grip and uh, friction uh, of okay. carrying the ball, just for ball security reasons. And then, you know, our offensive line, we have kind of a tough guy attitude, so they yeah. don't wear sleeves. And so you know, you, you look up, and there's only a couple of the, uh, only a couple of kids that'll have sleeves on Saturday, and. Uh, and we've had teams before where none of them wore them. So yeah. it's, uh, it's just one of those things that uh, it starts out with just uh, kind of a, you know, a, a, a valid reason and really then it kind of turns into a mindset. So, yeah, the, the offensive linemen and backs and uh, quarterbacks don't wear sleeves. You're never going to be the only one. I mean, right. So, if, like, you know, if you, you know, yeah, if you had uh, – I, I get it. It makes perfect sense to me now. I just yeah. didn't uh, – know exactly what he was and, talking and about. And Aaron has been critical of that because he doesn't like being cold. So Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, he did grow up in uh, in South Carolina so uh, and has been here. And uh, this is rather unusual, obviously, sure. uh, for, this, sure. uh, for this time of the year. I did look ahead in your game at VMI on Saturday. You're looking at mostly sunny and 49. So uh, it would be cool, but not, cool. not yeah. too bad. Not too uh, bad. Not brutal. Now, overnight no. there, they're going to get to 32. My phone says it's 41 in Charleston now, so it'll be warmer then than it is right now. Yeah. And it, uh, we, uh, our equipment manager, Kevin Yeager, talked to the equipment guy at uh, VMI uh, this afternoon. It was 19 degrees in Lexington with 20-mile-an-hour winds. Wow. So he said it was absolutely miserable at their practice today. Felt like uh, tennis, probably, yeah. I would think. That's a, that's a very cold day. Yeah. Very cold day. Well, that's a that was a different mental hurdle that you had to get over today, uh, but uh, it probably is less uh, for the guys than it is the those who aren't doing something of a uh, yeah. Once they once, once they get moving around, they're yeah. fine. The the people that are standing around are the yeah. ones that freeze. So, yeah. Uh, but, the, but yeah, the kids did fine. Well, the uh, dogs are in preparation for the Military Classic of the South, which we'll get to in just a little bit from right now. Uh, did, though, want to go through and do a little bit of a postmortem on the Sanford ball game. Obviously, Good teams, word for it. You know, yeah, teams, teams try to, to put those things to bed uh, and bury them as, as soon as they possibly can. And so uh, uh, you know, you, you've had a chance to probably look at it two or three times on Sunday and, and kind of get out of the game what you want to get out of it before you put it away. So what are your thoughts a few days after it happened? Coach? Well, you know, the frustrating thing is, you know, we were playing an extremely talented ball club in Sanford. And, uh, you know, I think they're as talented as anyone in our league uh, personnel-wise. Uh, they're coming in extremely hot, uh, having, having blown out uh, Western Carolina, Furman, and Concordia in the last three contests. Uh, we come in there with a game plan. Our, our players go out and execute it fantastically. Uh, and really, we dominate the football game. Uh, we had uh, 419 yards of offense, held the ball for over 37 minutes. 
uh, held them to under 300 yards of total offense going into the last drive of the day, held them to a third of their average point total on the day. Uh, and really, you know, I, I, I firmly believe that we're getting ready to, to pull off a huge upset and a big win and, and you know, continue our winning streak. Uh, and so for things just not to quite go our way towards the end of the game and to let that one slip away really has been tough to handle. And it was tough for the, the players, especially the seniors, because, um, you know, they, they've, really, they, as, they've really bought into everything we've done and, and they invested so much in preparation last week and then went out and played so, so well. Uh, and so to, to not, uh, not have the, the win as the result was, uh, you know, it was a tough one to swallow now. Bye. Style. Selection. Service. Quality. Value. See what everyone is talking about. Ashley Furniture Home Store. We'll get to, to a little bit more about the Military Classic of the South in just a few minutes, but there is something that your team is experiencing. I mean, this week, uh, the ball game against Sanford was the seniors' last home game. Right. VMI is their last game, period. So you've had two pretty, what, what will amount to, at least for the seniors, if they look at it, you know, the kids look at things differently. Right. But uh, if if they're the uh, the emotional types, it's two straight weeks of a uh, yep. very emotional football game. Yeah, and, you know, we tried to do something a little bit different than uh, what's been done in the past with uh, Senior Day in the last home game and um, had, uh, had uh, the seniors and their parents uh, recognized before the game during the pregame ceremony right before the coin toss. Uh, and then all the seniors served as game captains for the game. And it's something I've traditionally done with our teams and, because I, I firmly believe that each year you're, you're, you, you'll know how good your team is going to be, usually based on the leadership of your senior class. And, uh, you know, so I, I'm, I put a lot of emphasis on those, on those guys because they've been there, they've invested in your program and been with you usually for a long time. Now, it's a little bit different deal this year with uh, the coaching transition, but, you know, this group has been fantastic with us. So, uh, and then, you know, the last game of their – of their career is, you know, obviously going to be an emotional day for them as well. You uh, Earlier we mentioned that you had Aaron Miller and you had Cam Mobley at the press conference today. I had a chance to sit down with both of them individually after the ball game or after the uh, press conference. And uh, Aaron said it at the podium. Cam said it while talking with me. I think if you polled these guys, not just because they have a love for the game of football, right. but because they'd like to keep playing for you and your staff, both – had, a, had made a mention of the fact that they wish they were coming back to play right. one more year. I thought that spoke volumes of their buy-in to what you're trying to do right. after being with us and uh, with them uh, just since January. Yeah, and I do feel like we've made a pretty strong bond with the, the senior group uh, in spite of only having eight, nine, ten months with them. Uh, and uh, and, cer- and certainly we wish we had those two and the rest of them back as well because, you know, you just – you only get so much time to work with them and, you know, just now are some of them truly starting to understand your scheme and all the nuances of it on both sides of the football. Uh, and that's why when you, when you see a staff and a team that can be together for so long, much like Chattanooga right now, um, that they're going to be a much, much better team because they've seen everything. You know, they've seen everything and every situation and how it applies to your scheme that you can possibly see. And we're still seeing things for the first time, you know, week 10, week 11 of the season, you know, because of our first year together. Charleston Crab House has been serving locals and visitors alike for the last 20 years. We have our crispy whole flounder. We have the seared ahi tuna. You name it, in the seafood business, we have it. Be sure to stop by the Tiger and Leaf Lounge whenever you visit our location. We have many frozen and specialty drinks, awesome margaritas. One of my favorites is the Wapu Punch. If you don't like it down in the historic district, come over to James Island, sit on the Intercoastal Waterway. It is an unbelievable view where it's southern seafood at sensible prices and a darn good time. Our new uh, college football playoff rankings have come out now, and so the top four teams this week, and what a crazy week we had in college football over the weekend. The top four now 
are Alabama, number one, Oregon, number two, Florida State, number three, and Mississippi State, number four. And so with Alabama's victory over Mississippi State, they move from five to one, but Mississippi State does not fall out of the top four. And so uh, it's been fun to watch that all season long as the debate just rages back sure. and forth. If you had eight teams, then the nine and ten. Number nine, yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's the same way. I mean, it doesn't matter. You know, with us in uh, FCS with 24, you know, 25 yeah. and 26, they're going to be, you know, griping if they didn't get in. But it does uh, it does create a little more excitement for the fans. And it'll be neat to watch the, you know, the, the, the four-man tournament there at the end of the season and see how it turns out. So You, you make a, a good point. It brings up a thought to me that last year there were three teams that won the Southern Conference. Right. Chattanooga did not get in. Right. They had a game they lost, and so they picked Sanford and they took Furman. Uh, last year in the playoffs and so uh, Chattanooga of course this year made sure that there was no uh, no doubt about it they took yeah. care of it on the field and, and went ahead there what do you think the league could get in the playoffs this year is it a one bid league two three I'd really be surprised if we got two okay. uh, and I, I do think uh, you know Sanford is probably the one that would get in next um, but I do think their schedule may hurt them a little bit you know, they've got uh, Concordia and Steelman both on their schedule, which will not count uh, for the playoffs. Yeah. Uh, and then they've got, uh, you know, TCU and Auburn, which, you know, make it pretty tough. So, uh, you know, even though they're a, a seven-win team, you know, they've only got five FCS wins. So uh, it'll be interesting to see, uh, you know, if they have a shot or not. But I would, I would be surprised. Yeah, Sanford is going to only play 11 games this year, too. And they are seven and three. And then they play at Auburn this week. And so – uh, it, it, to me, kind of feels like they might be on the outside looking right. in on that one, too, and I think Western Carolina probably, too. But uh, I think uh, Western Carolina, for example, in your league would say, well, I think, I think they can sleep at night given the turnaround that they made from sure. last year to this year. Sure. Yeah, no doubt. And, you know, they had a, a solid season and a, the first winning season in, in a long time. I don't know how long. It's probably been a decade. Uh, so, uh, you know, Congratulations to Mark Spear and, and, and that staff there. And uh, so I'm sure they'll – and with Troy Harris back, they're going to be – you know, they'll be hard to handle again next year. Yeah, there's no doubt about that. Well, we're on to the next one, and that one is the VMI Cadets. And so this is the military classic of the South. And so far, uh, it has been uh, – well, not so far, but in, in the last several years, it has been a little bit of a lopsided series. But uh, – from talking to your two seniors today, uh, Cam Mobley, Aaron Miller, both of them recalled when we talked unsolicited that the games always seemed to be kind of a dogfight. I know right. last year's game was very close until the fourth quarter, and then the Citadel scored uh, three touchdowns to pull away. But ordinarily, this is a pretty close series. I guess it's your typical rivalry series. Yeah, and, I, and I'll tell you, I, I do think VMI is better than they were a year ago. You know, they've got uh, – the top passing quarterback in the league and freshman Al Cobb. You know, he was redshirted last year, but he's thrown for about 2,700 yards, 18 touchdowns. Uh, they are a big, strong offensive line that do a great job in protection. They do run the ball decently. Uh, defensively, they're a big, strong front uh, up front. Uh, so, uh, and, and they're playing at VMI, which, you know, the interesting, interesting stat that, uh, you know, we discovered was – you know, they're averaging, I think, 24, 25 points a game on the year. Uh, at home, they're averaging 37 points a game. So uh, I think it's going to be a very challenging game for us and one that we'll have to play very, very well in in order to have a chance to win. VMI is 2-9. and nine. They're 1-5 and five in the league. Uh, they're a multiple offense. Coach mentioned Al Cobb. He's on the Rice Award watch list. He's a three-time Southern Conference Freshman of the Week. Completes 61% of his passes. Thrown for over 300 yards five times this season and so uh, and this was as lopsided in this next two statistics that I've seen so far this year I always look at what a team's passing yardage is in right. terms of their total offensive output and because and then I look at what they called you know running plays versus passing right. plays this is a team that from a yardage perspective 71 percent of their total yards come via the pass and 29% rush. 
from a play calling perspective, 56% pass, 44% run. Mm -hmm. Most of the time, I mean, even when a team seems to throw it a lot, it's still a lot of times 55% run. Right. I mean, this team must really, really want to throw the football. Yeah, and they do a good job with it. You know, it's uh, they do a good job protecting Cobb. He's a good decision maker, does a good job with where he places the ball. Uh, and, you know, they've got big receivers, you know, 6'5", 6'6", 6'4", you know, all tall guys out there. So, And they've got, you know, two talented running backs to do a good job catching the ball out of the backfield. So I Well, I think this one uh, is different from the standpoint of um, it doesn't quite date back as long and as bitter as the Furman rivalry has been. But I do think this was more of a rivalry of respect uh, from, the, from the fact that uh, you have the two military institutions uh, in the Southern Conference and at the FCS level. So uh, you have VMI that is really the only other school uh, like ours. Now, of course, I think the big debate with our alums is which one's harder, you know, for the, for the cadets. You know, they, they'll, they're, well, you know, this, they don't have to do what we have to do or they don't have to do what we – and they go back and forth. And so, so it is very much a respect thing, but it's, uh, you know, there's so many similarities that there's, uh, you know, there's, there's just, you know, a, a lot of – just a lot of things that are, that are very, very – um, alike about both uh, schools and both programs from what you have to do and the the special type of kids that are that are student athletes at our schools and with some of the same sentiments that we heard from coach woods this morning when i heard him uh, speaking on the media call today it's obvious from that and i know you're in the same boat with him in that he obviously has a great amount of respect for what the young men who play for him have to do right every morning not just sure. uh, not just when they're practicing and those sorts of things and you know uh, they're up early not sleeping in it's uh, it's a I know he has a great amount of respect for what his kids go through thus I know he has a great amount of respect for you guys sure sure and he's you know we kind of talked about it some this summer when uh, we were at the SOCON meetings and uh, Amanda and I saw he and his wife out at dinner one night and uh and we kind of, you know, just exchanged some stories there. And uh, I've got a friend that's on the basketball staff at VMI that's actually an old Ryan grad. And so he's kind of told me some in-depth stuff uh, there. So, uh, you know, it's just interesting hearing uh, someone at a, at a similar institution that deals with the same problems and kind of how they approach it and, and how, uh, you know, they try to get around, uh, you know, making it work. They have struggled, there's no question, from a record perspective. They have been competitive. Uh, but I wonder, uh, from an outside perspective, what would you think it would take to get VMI in a position, not that you want them to much, depends on the week, right. uh, but how, do they, uh, how does a program like that turn the corner? The, the biggest thing is, is you have to have consistency uh, within your recruiting classes and retention. And, you know, if you can recruit uh, – the kind of players you want year in, year out, and you can retain them and grow them up, then that's where you're going to see success. And, and that's the kind of the, you know, the thing that, uh, that, that we are trying to do and uh, we firmly believe we can do here at the, at the Citadel is recruit players that uh, will be successful academically and institutionally at our school that fit our scheme and fit the kind of players we want. Uh, and then we've got to ret retain them and grow them up. And, uh, you know, when we get to where we can do that consistently year in, year out, and you can stack together three or four years like that, then you'll start seeing a team that has a lot of depth, a lot of experience, that doesn't graduate everything in one year. Um, a little bit like what happened last year. You know, you, you had a, a huge senior class last year at the Citadel um, that graduated, and then all of a sudden you came into this year, this year with a lot of young kids. And so uh, you'd like to get the program to the point where, 
where you're you're reloading every year instead of re you know having rebuilding years. Because there's definitely a difference there. We don't no have doubt. time to go through all of your uh, guys that you're going to see on the field for the last time. So let's just focus on the two that you had with you today right. at your press conference, and that is Aaron Miller, Cam Mobley, uh, and uh, you know obviously you would. Uh, You'd, you'd, you'd have those guys back for several more years if you could. But, Absolutely. Uh, you know, talk about the loss of those two guys after you play this Saturday at VMI. Well, I think the, the one thing that they both share in common uh, is they have tremendous leadership uh, on the field. And uh, it's not just leadership vocally, but it's leadership by example. Uh, and Aaron Miller, uh, to me, and, you know, I've been fortunate to coach a lot of good players over the years and, and uh, thus had a lot of success with them. But uh, Aaron Miller, to me, is – probably the most the the best competitor that I've ever coached and the best leader that I've ever coached and uh, you know he has such drive and determination and then you put that along with he does have the athletic ability the size the strength and and the intelligence I mean we talked about it all year long all the stuff he does at the line of scrimmage for us um, and he is just really a special player and one that will will go down even though he was only a starter for one year which to me is a travesty um, he will go down as one of the great players in Citadel football history. Very good player, no question about that. You told a humorous story about what kind of player Cam Mobley was when you got here. <laughs> <laughs> well, I can remember the first winter workout we had, and uh, you know, and you're putting them through drills and stuff to kind of see what you got. And, and uh, Coach Tesh and I both commented with each other that you know this kid can't play three snaps. He's in such bad shape. You know, there's no way. You know, I don't know how good a player he is. You know, he can't he can't make it through a drill. And uh, so our first challenge to him was to drop about 30 pounds. Uh, and he, you know, he, he got from, you know, right around 300, I think he got down to maybe 270 or so before camp. Um, he's hovering down in the high 250s now. Um, but what you saw as a result was a faster, uh, quicker uh, player on the field and one that plays, you know, 60 snaps a ball game, you know, and can play extended, uh, extended drives without having to come out of the game. Okay, look forward to the game on Saturday, and thank you for being here all year, Coach. This oh, is a big, so. uh, great. big, big uh, piece out of your time, and so we greatly oh, appreciate your action. And, and thanks a lot to Kick and Chicken; they've been a great sponsor for us, and uh, uh, we look forward to continuing this relationship in in the years uh, moving on. And uh, and just what a what a great uh, setting this is. Agreed, agreed, very much. Thanks so much for joining us, folks. We're all finished for this season. It's a wrap, and we thank Melissa back in our studios for being in that position and taking care of us. So from kicking chicken for the last time this season, we say so long. The dogs are on the road at VMI on Saturday, at 1.30 kickoff at VMI in Lexington, Virginia. Until then, go Bulldogs. Good night, folks. Since 2002, the lottery has helped award more than 1 million scholarships. So when you play, you're not just taking a chance. You're also giving one.